Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today we're going to talk about the endospores. Uh, endospores are uh, resistant dormant structures that are present in certain gram-positive bacteria like uh, Bacillus or Clostridium and uh, they are developed when uh, their essential nutrients are uh, diminished are depleted like uh, carbon or nitrogen which are uh, macronutrients uh, when uh, there is a deficiency of these major nutrients then uh, certain uh, gram positive bacteria have the ability to produce uh, uh, some uh, to produce a resistant dormant structure uh, in their body uh, because of which they become uh, extremely highly resistant to uh, normal uh, uh, environmental stresses like uh, dehydration or uh, desiccation or uh, chemicals certain certain chemicals uh, or uh, radiation um, uh, these structures are called endospores uh, uh, these uh, uh, endospores can survive even in uh, boiling water uh, for an hour or more. Uh, some endospores have been found to remain viable for more than 100,000 years. So they are highly resistant structures. Um, so uh, let's see what kind of a structure does an endospore have. Um, the bacterial endospore has many different layers starting with a core that is in the center and this core contains the uh, nucleoid the ribosomes and uh, uh, extremely de dehydrated form of cytoplasm uh, the uh, cytoplasm in an endospore is uh, uh, dehydrated to an extent that uh, there may be 25% uh, uh, of the water uh, that is found in a vegetative cell and this extreme re uh, dehydration increases the heat resistance so uh, here we can see the core and this core contains the uh, nucleoid the dna and uh, then it contains certain important certain uh, ribosomes and uh, then it may contain certain important enzymes uh, inside and cytoplasm dehydrated cytoplasm then uh, there is a complex uh, there is there are small acid soluble proteins and these acid soluble proteins are complexes of calcium dipicolinic acid this complex of uh, calcium dipicolinic acid it um, uh, protects the dna uh, it protects it from degradation it protects it from heat and it stabilizes it so uh, the, these uh, complexes of uh, calcium dipicolinic acid they are inserted between the dna bases here you can see the uh, calcium dpa is inserted in the dna which protects this uh, dna from heat and uh, it stabilizes it uh, then uh, the core is wrapped in an inner membrane that provides a permeability barrier to chemicals this core it is wrapped by a membrane that is called inner membrane and this inner membrane pr protects the endospore from uh, chemicals uh, it acts as a barrier uh, to certain chemicals that may be harmful otherwise uh, then this uh, inner membrane is further surrounded by a cortex and the cortex is actually a thick layer of peptidoglycane uh, with less cross-linking than is found in vegetative cell so the inner membrane is surrounded by the cortex and the cortex is actually a thick wall of peptidoglycane uh, then uh, the cortex is wrapped in an outer membrane and the outer membrane is surrounded by a spore coat that is made up of uh, protein several protein layers and these uh, protein spore coat uh, it protects the uh, endospore 
from environmental stresses such as chemicals and enzymes here you can see the cortex is surrounded by an outer membrane and the outer membrane is then surrounded by a, a spore coat and the spore coat is actually a protein uh, it is made up of protein layers and it protects uh, the endospore from chemicals and enzymes so the coat is also um, the coat also contains certain enzymes that are involved in germination so that whenever uh, there are favorable conditions and the endospore uh, needs to be converted back into a vegetative cell it can germinate again lastly the spore coat is often surrounded by a thin delicate covering called the exosporium um, then uh, let's see uh, the process of endospore formation uh, the endospore formation is actually called this process is called sporulation or sporogenesis and it can take several hours the vegetative cells of endospore forming bacteria uh, begin sporulation when a key nutrient like carbon or nitrogen becomes scarce so whenever there is a deficiency of important nutrient like carbon or nitrogen uh, the bacteria which is uh, a uh, which is an endospore forming bacteria only those bacteria which can make up an endospore they uh, uh, start this process of sporulation so the first process the first stage of sporulation is the formation of a uh, spore septum here we can see that the bacteria first of all the uh, chromosomal material it uh, uh, separates the uh, and then uh, uh, newly this newly replicated dna is uh, surrounded by a spore septum here we have the dna the plasma membrane you can see uh, the cytoplasm and the cell wall and this plasma membrane it sura starts surrounding the newly replicated dna uh, this is called um, this invagination of the plasma membrane is called spore septum and then the spore septum completely surrounds this dna the newly replicated dna uh, this structure inside an original uh, cell is called four spore this is now called a four spore uh, this this is now called a four spore which contains a, a double membrane layer of the plasma membrane then uh, as we've uh, seen earlier that these uh, the uh, plasma membrane in between uh, the plasma membrane uh, peptide a layer of peptidoglycan uh, forms uh, a thick layer of peptidoglycan is formed that is called cortex and uh, then uh, calcium and dipyclinic acid is inserted in the dna and uh, then finally uh, a layer of protein is formed that is called spore core so we have a core inside having the dna and the cytoplasm and the ribosomes and the enzymes then there is the inner membrane that is the inner layer of the plasma membrane then in between there is a uh, cortex of peptidoglycan then there is an outer membrane right and then we have a spore coat and then uh, now this cell is called a sporangium uh, the uh, cell which contains an endospore inside it. this is now called a sporangium so uh, this sporangium then uh, breaks down by certain lytic enzymes uh, breaks down the sporangium so that the endospore can uh, uh, ex exit out of it uh, sporulation uh, in a bacteria that is bacillus megatherium requires about 10 hours endospore position uh different bacteria uh endospore forming bacteria forms the endospore at different positions and depending upon their uh, position of the endospore they can be identified so uh, the endospore may be uh, formed terminally or it may be formed subterminally or centrally then there are certain bacteria uh, that uh, make that produce an endospore so large that it swells the sporangium here you can see the the sporangium the mother cell is swollen so this is a central 
uh, endospore with swollen sporangium, a subterminal endospore with swollen sporangium, and a terminal endospore with swollen sporangium. So, uh, the different bacteria produce endospores at different locations. The diameter of the endospore may be small, uh, may be same as, or it may be smaller than, or larger than the diameter of the vegetative cell. Germination. An endospore uh, returns back to its vegetative state by a process called germination. When the conditions are favorable, the endospore uh, converts back into its original form, the vegetative state, and this process is called germination. Um, after germination, the bacteria becomes metabolically active it can carry out its normal metabolic activities including growth and cell division uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, there are enzymes present in the endospore which break the extra layers uh, of the endospore and then the water enters so that the dehydrated cytoplasm can rehydrate and so metabolism can resume uh, now this is not a process of reproduction uh, you can see that one vegetative cell converts into one endospore and then in case of germination one endospore uh, converts germinates back into one vegetative cell the, their number is not increasing so this is not a means of reproduction this is simply a process of protecting the cell importance of bacteria endospores are uh, important in food industry because they are highly resistant structures and they are resistant to different uh, environmental conditions environmental stresses that normally kills the vegetative cells uh, they are resistant to certain processes that normally kill a vegetative cell. Uh, different processes like heat or desiccation or use of chemicals or radiations uh, 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 that are used in a food industry to protect the food against the bacteria, the, these endospores are resistant to those processes. So they are extremely important uh, in, a, in a clinical viewpoint in food industry. Um, Normally, most vegetative cells are killed at temperatures of above 70 degrees centigrade. These endospores can survive those temperatures. They can even survive in boiling water for several hours. So, obviously, uh, they can uh, 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 they can survive uh, under these processes, and they can spoil the food. They can cause spoilage of the food. Uh, uh, endospores of thermophilic bacteria that is heat loving bacteria can survive in boiling water for 19 hours uh, so if there is uh, under processing uh, in a food industry if the processing is not perfect then uh, these bacteria they can convert into endospores uh, 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 they can if they ha uh, if there are endospores present already then they can survive they will be able to survive those conditions and they uh, uh, will uh, cause produce toxins and cause disease this was all about the endospores thank you